want to start by congratulating our volleyball team. That was uh, obviously impressive, and uh, you know what the what they did. It's uh, it gives you. you know, I think I've always been impressed with you know, get a chance to see them and and how they work and the commitment. But uh, for them to be national champs, I think that's uh, well deserved, and and obviously. Uh, quite a quite an achievement so congrats to them um it's been interesting you know this past uh past weekend was a, a good weekend for us in, in in many ways you know uh friday we had our uh team banquet and before that we had a uh kind of a grad reception for all student athletes and and um and then graduation on sunday and i think we had 19 guys, you know, earn a degree, um, some a master's. Um, it, was a, it was a good weekend, you know. It was, uh, I thought it was really cool. Fayon Hicks's uh, grandma, first time coming to Madison, you know, she said she wasn't going to come for a football game, but she was going to come for graduation, and yet uh, worked out where she was also able to be at the banquet. And, and uh, you know, the banquet, I think what, what stood out to me is that uh, – you know, when guys get up and, and speak or you, you watch the the parent videos or, you know, just hearing our guys talk, it's, uh, y you've you've heard me comment a number of times just how, how much this team cares about each other and appreciates each other. And, and that was certainly evident, uh, you know, in, in a big way at, at the banquet. But uh, good weekend that way. And, and I like the way the guys have – Approach the the bowl practices and, and preparation, and um, you know a number of guys are have like one more final or one more paper or project, but kind of schools winding down, and and uh, we'll get into this coming week a little bit more of a you know, full prep on Arizona State, but uh, it, it's been good to this point. You know, certainly like every team, you know, I think we were banged up at the end of the. Season and and you know number of guys were able to take advantage of the of the time and we still got a couple guys that are still working through a, a few but it's um, it's been good to get guys back and going and and looking forward to this week you know here where we can kind of have a, a good week of practice and then get out on the trip and and uh, you know we got two classes right we got last year's freshmen and and this year's freshmen that really haven't been on what you'd say would be more of a traditional bowl. And and I think, you know, the older guys have done a great job of this, and we got to make sure that our younger guys understand that, you know, we want them to have, you know, two things you know, when you get an opportunity to play a bowl game, and that's enjoy and appreciate the experience and then play play a really good game and, and play good football. And I think that you do those two things, you play well and you're with your teammates, your friends, you know, at some point a lot of their families will come out, you can have a neat experience. You do those two things, then it's uh, that makes for a really good bowl. And and I like the way the guys have approached it and, and know that, you know, you're out there to play a game and, and that's what you got to keep your focus on, but you'll have enough time to, to also enjoy it. And we got a number of guys who never been to – Las Vegas and, and want them to be able to enjoy and appreciate it, especially when you're hanging around and you're doing things with your teammates. Like again, with a group, they, they like being around each other. So a lot coming up, but uh, but it's been good to this point. We just gotta keep going. That was long. <laughs> you had some guys who were a little bit banged up, but like, like a lot of teams, Braylon Allen said that he needed some time to to get away. I, I know he got a lot of experience this year, but he's still a young kid in, in terms of the game. What do you what do you hope that he can use from this season to build on going into next year to improve as an all around football player? Yeah, I think that uh you know, any time that a, a guy kind of you know goes through a season you know then better how to prepare for the next season and and so and that that goes from 
how do I train? You know, how do the different, you know, winter conditioning, what am I looking to get out of? He hasn't been through a winter condition yet, but he now knows what he's preparing for. Um, when he's studying the tape, you know, it's, it's him on there. And so when it's, whether it's, you know, this, this run scheme versus, you know, how is it versus different fronts? You know, and, and pass protections, you know, where is this and what type of route, how do I fit, where do I fit, right? There's just so much that, you know, you now value that much more, you know. When we go to spring ball and, and we're in a um, ball security uh, segment of practice, you know, this is, yeah, I lived this one. That This one, that's, this one comes right off of that that game. And maybe it's... Not him, but it might be something that happened with Chaz. But you know, you, when you're in it, you're so close to it. Like this is it. Um, I think. How do I take care of myself? Like you said, when you just finish a season, you know, this on my legs or my shoulders, or you know, so I gotta maybe focus on this in the training, um, right? You can. There's so many ways that you can. Now, you've been around it. You've been around. You know. The, the track one time I can better prepare for the the next the next year I think that's what's always exciting for anyone whether it's your first year or anytime you finish playing your first year you know you can prepare so much more for playing your second year Paul I wanted to ask you about Deacon Hill um, when you've been working with him this season what are the things that you've tried to help him with as he's adjusted to the college game and also where has he made the most progress going through this season? Yeah, you know, uh, Deacon, like we we thought, and we, you know, when he came in, you know, he's got he's got a talented arm, and um, you know, I think it was it was good for him to, you know, just get a chance to to kind of learn whether it's you know our offense and just defensively, you know, what are people. You know how do defenses play you and and uh, he's been it's been really good you know the the bowl prep you wish you had more for guys like Deacon you know that um, you know just starting to take advantage of all the all the reps that they're getting um, but I've I've loved the way that he's approached kind of everything he wants to learn and um, and it's it's been good and when you can then follow up that learning those meeting times with you know, significant reps, I think that's helpful. Um, but I think he's been – the bowl the bowl prep has been – it's been fun with him. And, it, you know, certainly I think what you gain on scout team, you know, going up against, you know, every day, you know, facing our defense and good defense, you know, there's there's things to learn there. But it's also good to kind of get back and, and I look forward to spring where you kind of, okay, this is our offense and, and this is how it all fits. And – you know, this is the speed of the game that you've got to – You at every high school has got to adjust to the speed of the game. And so um, I've liked the way that he's approached it and, and, and look forward to, you know, what we get still in this bowl prep, but then getting them ready. we got time before spring ball starts and, and uh, spring will be big for him. Paul, when, I know you're focused on your team, but if you look around the country, there's guys – heading to the pros saying, you know, I'm, I'm not going to play in bowl game X or whatever. And I don't think you've ever had that happen here. I don't know if you, it's the word fortunate is appropriate, but are you surprised that since you've been a head coach that no one's come up to you and said, Coach, I had a great time, but it's time for me to prepare. I'm going I'm to skip this bowl game. Yeah, it's, um, you know, you, you certainly follow kind of the whole um, what's all happening, right? And – and I've always thought that, you know, when it comes down to it, you still are dealing with individuals and their situations. And, and yet I think that there's also equally, um, you know, certain dynamics that, you know, I, I do think when guys really like playing and particularly like playing with the group they're with, you know, it's it's – you know, for so many guys, the last chance that we get to play together, and and they value that um, in a big way. And and I think our guys also know that every time you go out and play, you know that there's a 
there's a risk. And, you know, I was here when, um, you know, when Joe, you know, was kind of going back and forth and there was more conversation probably than, you know, but he was certainly in a position, you know, Joe Thomas in a position to where he can go and, and heck, he gets it. He was playing defense at the time, you know what I mean, uh, on that one. But I think that you, you do, um, I think I am grateful that the guys do that. But I think it, each each individual's uh, different. And I think that there will be situations and, you know, Ryan, like Ryan Conley, his last game, he didn't play and, and you know, had surgery and it, it wouldn't have been. Could he have postponed it? I don't know. Like he he truly gave all he had, and and I don't even know if that would have been even a possibility. You know, I just think our guys, um, to this point, they they do like playing with each other, and 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 it's one more opportunity to do that, um, and, and they value they they valued that. Paul, we've been speaking to your guys, Levin. Uh, one name that keeps coming up is Marcus Allen and uh, what he's been able to do in bowl prep. And I'm wondering what you've seen from him. He said he had a little bit of a lull in the middle of the season where he lost some confidence, um, but the Rutgers game kind of built him back up. What have, what have you seen from him, and where do you think his trajectory is? Yeah, it's been uh, – in, in, you know, he, he's, he's right. There was a little bit of a lull, but he's uh, – I've loved the way he responded from that, and I thought the way he finished out kind of our regular season and and certainly in bowl prep, he's uh, he's been really good and been able to get a lot of reps and 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 I think he's coming out with great purpose and I think you know, Jim's done a great job of kind of taking him under his wing and all right this is this is how you go approach walk through this is how you approach this but. Um, you know, we're really excited when he came and, you know, even when he was going through his lull, I, I love being around him every day. And uh, I think he's obviously talented and I think he's got a real, um, he's a guy that can truly make an impact on this team. Paul, kind of going with that opt-out question, a couple of guys on the Arizona team or Arizona State team have opted out. Does it make it more difficult to game plan for a team when they're going to be using guys that weren't a big part of? Their year throughout the year you're studying. Yeah, it's. A, I think when you're specifically looking at them, you know, um, you know, for instance, you know, there's a there's a couple of those position groups where they did they were pretty deep, and so you saw it. So I think you can see on film. All right, this is who's going to be playing, and and so I think therefore it's it's less difficult than. Uh, for instance, if it's you just don't if you have so limited snaps of seeing that individual, um, and and so I think for our game planning purposes, it's um, it, it, it I don't see it as being a, a huge challenge. Paul, just talking about you know this kind of being the last ride for a number of guys um, with these bowl practices and everything. Again, for this guy, for the guys that are you know, making the most out of their final practices and everything. Who are some guys that you could pinpoint that are helping out these younger guys and, and making the most out of practices? I think they, they've all been they've all been doing that. And, you know, we'll have – early when we were going, it was, you know, the very first practice we had, we had a group of guys that were going to practice, and we had a, a group that, you know, played a lot of snaps, and so we wanted them to you know, get a chance to get in the weight room and – and really try to help them kind of recover a little bit. And yet, as soon as they were done with their time in the weight room, they were coming out on the field. And and I think you just go across the board, you know. Um, a lot of guys remember when they were, you know, in those shoes and, and older players helped them. And I think that's one thing that I've always appreciated from the players here is that they – they will spend a lot of time with their teammates, and particularly younger ones, and and so it's. Um, I think it's been across the board. You know, I mean, it's they're all doing all they can to help, and and they want to. Uh, someone did it for them, and it's a great way to pay it back. And and uh, boy, is it valuable for our young our young guys appreciate that, right? And if you appreciate that, then. You remember it, and so you're gonna you're gonna pass that on when you can. So, 
Um, if it was just two or three, I'd, I'd throw it out there. But I think, you know, I'm trying to think now who hasn't done it, and I'm, it's not coming to my mind. You know, they all, they're out there, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty cool part of it. They, they all want to help in, in any way they can. Paul, you had a, a few linemen in the class of 2021 last year that were pretty highly touted coming out, you know, out of high school with you know, two of them, Riley Malman and Nolan Rucci. Just, I know one came in early uh, as a mid-year enrollee, but just how have you seen their development in their first year with with the program, and just you know, what what stood out from them so far? Yeah, it, it's been you know they've been able to get a lot of reps, and uh, and. And I've loved every rep that they get, you know, and, and I think you got two guys, you know, both are a little bit different, you know, each individual's different, but I think the, they've approached it um, the way you'd want to approach it, like they're they're valuing it. And even when it doesn't maybe go the way you want it, I think they're learning something from it. And, and so um, I've loved the way that, that they've both been – going about it and I think the, because they're going about it that way I think they've really been productive I think this will help them you know for spring you know and in and, and kind of this is how you go about it but I think what stands out to me most is that when the minute they get on that field they're they're working you know what I mean it, it's important to them and they're not they're not wasting a single rep an individual they're not wasting a single rep in the team not that every one of them has been perfect but I think they're they're trying to take from it learn from it and I think that's what stands out to me Paul we were talking to Rudy the other day about Josh Selzner and he said he goes I think he had quietly a really good year and I'm just curious what you saw from Selzner that was different this year than in previous years you know, I think what was – I don't know what was different as much as what stood out to me was just there was kind of a calm confidence, and that seemed to be reflective in a steady play. You know, so it kind of matched, you know, the way that went about it. And, um, you know, it, it, the, the moments – you know, the, the challenges, you know, it was just, he seemed very confident, but, and not, you know, it just, like, like I said, what hits me is a calm confidence. You know, it was just, and it reflected, and it was very steady and um, consistent. And I think that's what, what stood out to me the most. Well, you talked about the leaders on your team throughout the year. Jack Sanborn is obviously one of those guys. How do you think his maturity has kind of either rubbed off on other guys or impacted this team as a whole? Yeah, he uh, he has been something, you know, really special. And and I think he again, he who he is every day, um, and the approach that he takes, and and I think he's got a great awareness of everyone in the room and and uh you know kind of a humbleness he's gonna he's approachable he's um he's just been really so solid you know and 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 i think he's you know jack's not always want to be the the voice but also knew that people wanted to hear his voice and so I think that's what I've appreciated that not that that you know he's always capable of it and, and he knew it but I think that I think that's what he gave at, at times was that he was willing to do that if, and I just think the way he's approached every day and the teammate that he is on and off the field and certainly then when you play and play well and, you, you know, consistency comes to mind when you talk about Jack, but it's consistency at a high level and the way that he prepped, the way that he played, um, you know, the, the type of teammate that he is, it's it's all at a high level. And yet it, it doesn't feel uh, like it's ever false. It doesn't feel like he's working at it. That's just who he is, and I think that's what – 
what I've appreciated, you know, just in watching him. 